Picture it, the 1990s in the United States of America. Friends was most likely on your TV, and movies like Clueless, Titanic, and Singles were playing in the theaters. Donna Karen, Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren dominated the runways at New York Fashion Week. Kurt Cobain and Eddie Vedder and the likes brought grunge to the streets of America for the very first time and solidified it as a trend that defined the decade. And don't forget about Janet Jackson, boy bands, auto-tune, and Millie Vanilli. Another defining characteristic of the 90s for me as a teenager growing up in this decade was that sewing your own clothes was just about the most uncool thing that you could do. We're talking about risking being outcast from social circles, being labeled a holly hobby, or worse, being branded that weird girl that sews. So what was a girl like me who loved to sew and had endless ideas for clothes I wanted to make and wear to do? Well, I got really, really, really good at making sure that the things I made looked so professional that no one knew I made them. So no matter where you're at in your sewing journey, I just want to share that you're doing a great job and who cares what people think anyways. And this video really isn't about that. It's more about refining our skills and our thought process and how we approach our projects to get our own personal satisfaction from them and achieve a professional look that we're really, really proud to share. If we haven't met yet, I'm Christine and I post videos every week related to sewing, um, sewing projects and sewing tips and tricks like today's video. So when it comes to approaching a sewing project, I like to think of it in kind of three different buckets. The first is the fabric and pattern pairing. I feel like landing the perfect fabric and pattern pairing is really truly an art and a skill in and of itself. The second kind of bucket that I think of is the actual skill of sewing itself. And I'm gonna share in this video some of my tips and tricks that are actually not even related necessarily to the actual physical sewing, but make a huge difference in the ultimate outcome of your garment. And the third bucket that I like to think about is the styling. So you wouldn't take like a raw painting that you bought and just, you know, tack it up on your wall with some tape. No, you would get it beautifully framed, you would hang it, you would maybe um, hang it above your sofa and maybe find a couple pillows that kind of brought all the colors together. Um, maybe the painting you chose kind of matches your rug and really ties everything together. So that's how I like to approach stylings. So we're going to cover those three points and along the way I'll share all of my best tips and tricks. So when it comes to choosing the perfect fabric and pattern combination, first obviously I like to start with thinking about the fabric. And I put the fabrics in kind of two buckets. I think I really like buckets today. Um, but one is prints and one is solids. So if I want a really safe project that I know is going to look professional, I know is going to be easy to style and, um, and look sophisticated, I'll usually choose a solid. But prints are so beautiful also and so fun to sew with. So when I think of really nailing a print and getting that professional look using a print, I like to think of two kind of two different classifications and the first thing that I look for is familiarity. So this is like, have I seen this type of print, something very similar, either on the runway or on a blog or, um, you know, in an actual store that I've been to, is it a print that's already in kind of mainstream or, um, you know, luxury ready to wear already? that gives you this immediate kind of professional feel to your garment because it's a familiar print that's already in the mainstream. And this can be a really good reason for buying designer end cuts at stores like Mood in New York City or other stores that carry these specifically like designer end cuts of fabric. You know that fabric has already been in production from a major fashion brand. So it, it like immediately has the familiarity. The second kind of classification for prints um, that makes them feel more professional 
is that artistic factor or like a couture factor somehow. And a great example is the dress I'm wearing. So this print isn't necessarily something that we've ever seen in a store, right? But it has some kind of kind of a, I don't know, an artful look to it that's somehow kind of different and gives it almost like a couture feel. So when it comes to actually choosing the print for your actual pattern, this is really an art in itself. And it's something that, I mean, I still don't get right all of the time, but I like to divide prints into three categories. So the first are these really tiny scale prints. So these could even be like a ditzy floral you might have heard. Um, these are really small, small, small prints um, that very, very tight design, very, very tiny, tiny, tiny um, designs. So these work really well when you have patterns that have a lot of seams. So maybe you have a blouse that has a yoke and some puffy sleeves with some detailing. Maybe you have lots of darts or princess seaming in your pattern. These small scale prints can be really, really great for that kind of pattern. The second kind of bucket or type of print is a mid-scale print. So this would be something that has just a slightly larger design. Maybe it's abstract like this one, um, floral. So still a larger scale, um, a larger scale print, but still quite tight, not a lot of white space. Um, it repeats in pattern as well. This is another example that I would say is like a mid-size print, all over design, not a lot of white space, but a larger print. And these mid-scale prints are probably the ones that we see the most often. They're probably the safest, I would say, in the way that they work with a pattern that has a lot of seams to it or one that's more simple with just a few seams. These mid-scale prints are probably like the safest for any pattern. And then the last bucket of prints are large scale prints. So that would be an example like this one. So this is, um, you know, the print is very large. There's lots of space around the design. Uh, also, the one I'm wearing is would be an example of a large scale print, lots of white space. So these large scale prints can really give you that artful couture look that can totally elevate your make into that exclusive category. They are a bit more challenging because it's a lot about how you place the pattern, how you use the print in your garment. So if you have a large scale print, I think the best pattern is one that has very few seams. So think a long, simple coat or like the dress I'm wearing. This is my Mercer top pattern. It's very one simple body, no darts, no seams. Um, so it is a very simple design that really allows a large scale print to kind of shine. So when it comes to the actual skills and techniques of sewing, I mentioned earlier that what I was gonna to share today actually has nothing to do with the actual using of the sewing machine. So the first tip I wanna share actually has to do with mindset. So I feel like in today's world, there is so much pressure, like we all have so much pressure no matter what our lives are like if we have kids or we have grandkids or we live in a city or we live in the country we all have tremendous pressure in our lives these days and for me i realized that sewing i don't want the pressure i don't sew to add more pressure to my life i sew to relieve pressure so one of the things that i can be really intentional about when i start to feel a little tense with the sewing is just telling perfection that it just doesn't belong in my sewing room. I'm not sewing for perfection. Yeah, I want to achieve a professional look. I want to be proud of what I make, but it doesn't mean that it has to be perfect. And once I relieve that pressure of myself and just say, I'm sewing for fun today, or I'm sewing because I want to make a new dress to wear to this wedding, or I just wanna be try something new. I wanna be creative today. And honestly, I feel like I have way more fun sewing when I remove the expectation of perfection and my garments turn out better because I'm having fun and I'm not putting that perfection standard that's completely unrealistic on myself. 
So for my second tip, we're going to the ironing board. Okay, this is the number one thing that I see. It's the easiest, easiest fix to make your garments look more professional. And that is ironing. I know it's really like unsexy. It's like the thing, especially when it's hot in the summer that we don't even want to think about. But I feel like I'm going to be bold here and I'm going to say that even if you can't sew a straight line on your sewing machine, but you can press really well, your garment is going to look pretty darn good. So a couple tips for your pressing. So I grew up in the 90s, obviously, watching Nancy Zeman on PBS. And Nancy Zeman used to always say, press as you sew, meaning you sew your shoulder seams and then you press your shoulder seams. And then when you go to attach your sleeves, this seam is nice and crisp. So when you intersect it with another seam, all of your seams are super, super crisp as you go. So that is like the number one basic thing of pressing is press as you sew. And I kind of want to say that you can kind of be a little bit aggressive with your pressing. Like I want my seams crisp <laughs> and I don't stop until they are crisp before I attach another seam to that seam. Um, so some of the tips and tricks I use to achieve that um, are definitely you want to test your fabric and test the temperature of your iron so that you're not burning your fabric, obviously. And then also maybe you could use a higher heat to get a better result. And second, it's not really that important what kind of iron you have, whether you have a dollar store iron or a super fancy one. Uh, the most important part is that it has a steam setting and that you use the steam setting. So make sure you always have water in your iron and you utilize that steam function. Uh, as long as your fabric is like a cotton or a viscose or a natural fiber, that can take the steam and responds to the steam. So don't be shy with the steam or the heat. If your fabric is sensitive, like I always have this press cloth always, always, always by my iron. And this is literally just a piece of cheap cotton that was left over from a sample or something that I just uh, overlocked the edges of. You can see it's, it's like a, maybe a wall or a lawn or just a really cheap, um, you know, poplin or something that I can kind of see through. So if I'm pressing, I can kind of see my garment under it. And I'll always use this between my garment and my iron to protect my fabric from getting any kind of those, uh, the burn or the glare or the shine, which we definitely want to avoid. So press cloth is a must and you don't have to buy anything fancy. Just get an old, you know, old piece of fabric and use that as your press cloth. So also on the topic of steam, I always have a little bottle of water spritzer um, by my iron. And I use this if I am having a hard time getting a really, really crisp seam. I'll just spritz it with a little water. This is also great if your fabric has been folded and you have that mid fold line down your fabric that might be down the center front of your garment. Using a little bit of water can help get that fold line out. Um, but if I have a, a stubborn fabric that I don't feel like the seam is really crisp, I'll spray some water. I'll also spray my spray starch. So if you don't have a bottle of this, you gotta get one. It's super cheap and it can really help get that professional look. Even after your garment is made, you can do a final press with spray starch and get a really nice crisp look. Okay, and my final tip, because I like to be a little aggressive with my, with my pressing, sometimes you can get press marks where the seam allowance actually kind of makes a mark on the right side of your fabric so you can see where your seams are your five eighths of an inch seam on the right side so you know i'm not a huge fan of having a lot of gadgets i'm a pretty simple sewist and one of the things that i use also always have by my iron is a couple strips of brown paper bag paper and what I do if I have a fabric that 
I've tested and I notice that it's doing that marking. These are just, you know, maybe two, three inch wide strip of paper, paper bag. You just slide that between your garment and your seam allowance on either side of your seam allowance, and then you can press the heck out of that seam without getting the marks. So I can't stress enough how important pressing is to the final outcome of your garment and how much of a difference it makes in the whole look of your garment. So yeah, just a couple easy tips that help you get a professional look. So when it comes to styling my makes, just like the example of, you know, taping a fancy painting to the wall of my house, I like to rely on accessories to really help me build out that full look and help sort of frame the garment. So this, this can help take away from any imperfections maybe with the sewing, like maybe the zipper is a little messy or you know, a seam isn't quite straight. Styling can really help pull the focus away from some of those imperfections and just give you a complete look. And I feel like everyone kind of has their own style formula. For me, I love a chunky necklace. You probably have seen this necklace before. Um, I love this big chunky one uh, because it's a neutral color, so I can kind of wear it with a lot of different things. And it just really helps me kind of pull a look together. Um, I also have this really fun like turquoisey one beaded, which is great for summer. I'm always on the lookout for these kind of like statement necklaces. I really, really love them. The other thing is earrings. So, you know, little earrings like this that just kind of upgrade an outfit. Um, I also have my favorite ones, which I have a video about my denim kind of feather ones. This kind of takes the focus off of the garment onto the accessory and you know kind of evens out the focus i guess uh, rings can be really fun as well like little statement rings so i really like to play with the jewelry aspect and then you also have things like scarves so uh, whether it's around your neck or around your wrist or on your bag a scarf can be a really fun accessory to play with and also i'm always keeping my eye out for interesting bags that can either add a pop of color to an outfit or a great neutral, a good quality bag that can kind of go with a lot of things. I love a good bag that just ties everything together and shoes as well. I find shoes to be the hardest accessory for me to find things that I like. So there's a stylist named Allison, Allison Bornstein. She recently coined the phrase, the wrong shoe trend. So it's actually a trend of wearing a shoe that's just a little bit out of place, like a sneaker with a flowy dress or like a heavy loafer with a really soft gingham dress, kind of this juxtaposition with a shoe. So I'm always on the lookout for good shoes that can help complete my outfit. And belts are also another really fun accessory to be on the lookout for. I feel like if you have some fit issues with a dress, a belt can help bring some of the extra volume in. Um, it can help create a waist. I love following a YouTuber named Beebs Kelly. I'll link her below. She talks a lot about body shape and how to best kind of style for your body shape, as well as I love following Beth, um, B. Jones style. She is a stylist. She has amazing style and I feel like is really great with layering. So I think that that could be another uh, thing to kind of experiment with where the garment you made can just be one of a couple pieces of clothing on your body, which also can kind of take away if there's any imperfections um, and really just add to the beauty of the garment by just adding different layers and accentuating different parts of the fabric or the pattern. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate you and hope this video has been helpful, inspirational and giving you some food for thought and some new things to think about as you start your next project. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button on your way out. And I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next video. All right, bye.